Hi, I'm Blanca Regina and this is Steve Beresford. Hi. Uh, we curated together Alterations Festival. And this is the first event of the Alterations Festival, which is running pretty well all week. Um, there'll be an exhibition at uh, Otto Project Space starting on Wednesday. Yeah, it was based around a band called Alterations, which I was in, and we thought that was a good way to look at free improvisation. <laughs> As well as performances, talks, we ran a series of workshops that were a great chance to pass on the legacy and expand on the topic. I can hold it there. Yeah. Well, then, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the, you're going to look at the, the ball. I'm going to call it the ball for a moment, yeah. And you're going to be cutting. You're going to be cutting. So that blade, it's just got that blade, and you've just got to judge it. That blade's going to come down to. It's got to come down beyond there, otherwise it won't work. Yeah, that one. Can I just show you your one a minute? As you can see on this one, uh, it's quite finely cut. You see how finely cut that is, yeah? And it's gone, you can see that person's dropped with the same principle. I mean, I didn't know who made this, but they've done it exactly the same way. I do it slightly different than this one. I only very slightly, but the principle's the same. And when you start to make field recording, you actually begin to hear what's going on much more consciously and in a much more, much more detailed way than one normally does. So learning to make field recording is actually learning how to, to listen a bit more, or not learning, but kind of thinking about how you listen and what you're hearing. So when you start to listen to your, where you are, um, slightly more consciously and deliberately, you begin to hear details in there which most of the time you just ignore. Um, but that's necessary for field recording. I think it'd be interesting actually if you talked about how the group started because it so often gets reported by other people, often by me actually, but um, it's very rare for you to speak about it and it was you who started the group and it'd be interesting to hear you talk about some context. Yeah. Um, when was this? 1976 when the idea came about. Um, and at that time, I mean, the improvised music scene was generally um, a different combination of musicians playing every time. It was a very, very fluid. There are a lot of musicians, uh, but no or very few very fixed groups. Um, and at the time when it was, when I wanted to organize a concert, it was up to me to choose the musicians, ask them if they wanted to play. And I was doing that as was everybody else at that time. So. And this was one combination. I don't think it was any with the intention of it staying together for as long as it did. Um, but f for some reason, it just happened to work the first time we played. And also, as far as I remember, sound different. Um, so we decided to carry on. And here we are after a long gap. <laughs> You know what he was doing? This was during the Music Context Festival and we did a lot of events by the canal, along the canal. 
in Canberra. And Lowell was hiding in bushes <laughs> and making gorilla sounds <laughs> when people passed by. Well, he had a, did he have a cassette recorder? Yeah, he, yeah, had, yeah, he had a cassette recorder. We're very excited because we, we actually have the editors of this magazine here all together in the same room right now. So it's a very exciting moment. The magazine was, was devoted to dialogue and ideas, uh, debates. There were many um, people involved in the production process and the collective decision making throughout. The content was another important part of the magazine which, uh, where people were um, able to write uh, and talk about all these musical angles uh, in a way which I always found really exciting and informative. There were one or two pieces that did conform to this much debated straw man idea that you know somehow free improvisers say you can't play tunes, you can't play repetitive rhythms, you can't have a chord sequence and all those sort of things. And in fact, there was one piece that did say that, but it's the only piece I've ever seen that said that, but it was in this magazine. And I disagreed with it, of course, but we printed it because it was another form of manifesto, I suppose. It seems like the dialogue does have a continuum, and it does. I mean, you know, we're here today, actually, you know, uh, performing and playing and talking about this and reintroducing these documents. Thank <laughs> you. 